Recently, Recent Answers hit a milestone of 500 subscribers. To celebrate, I'm announcing a chance for the Muslims watching to win $500! All you have to do is prove a simple prophecy that the Quran implies Muhammad fulfilled to be true. More details on that in a moment. First of all, I'd like to give a warm welcome to all my Indonesian brothers and sisters who have recently come over from Chris Beckis channel. Your country is home to more ex-Muslims than any other and is arguably the number one battleground between Christianity and Islam right now. Chris is doing very important work translating videos into Indonesian and I look forward to working with him more in the future. I will have a couple videos on Indonesia specifically coming up, so be sure to stay tuned for those. As a reminder, all of my content is released under a Creative Commons open access license. This means you can translate, modify, sample, or otherwise reuse any of my content without asking for my permission. Just provide a link back to the original. Legal details can be found in the description of every video on my channel. If you are interested in translation, send me an email and I'll be happy to provide you an English transcript to any of my videos to facilitate. My next video will be on the spread of Christianity in Uganda and how even the Quran acknowledges the superiority of Jesus to Muhammad. I've been sick the last 10 days or so. Nothing serious, but a bad cough and some congestion has made recording difficult, and sadly, I didn't have any camel urine available. So that caused a delay in the production of my next video. If I sound a little weird, now you know why. I'm still congested. If I sound better than normal, well, I guess that you should pray that I stay congested. Future videos will explore how we are currently at a tipping point in history. Islam is being challenged intellectually for the first time in its 1400-year history, and people are leaving Islam in record numbers. We don't just want Muslims to trade the lie of Islam for the lie of atheism, however. We want them to come to the true love that only Christ can provide. As more and more Muslims leave, the exodus will pick up speed until it becomes an avalanche of apostasy, as predicted by Muslim scholar Bilal Phillips. It is my hope that this channel will play some tiny role in launching that avalanche. You can help this channel grow by spreading the word. Tell your Christian friends that something exciting is happening, that more Muslims have found Christ in the last 25 years than the rest of Islamic history combined. I have created Twitter and Facebook accounts to promote my new videos and share other information that doesn't make it into my videos. Share and retweet my posts, link to my videos on YouTube comments, and let's keep the momentum building. Links are in the description box and in the pinned comment. Now, on to the contest. The Quran states, If thou art in doubt regarding what we have sent down to thee, Ask those who recite the book before thee. Well, I am very much in doubt about the authenticity of Muhammad's revelation. Muslims debate whether this challenge was intended for Muhammad or people in general. But either way, it's clear that the author of the verse expected the book, elsewhere defined as the previous revelations known as Torah and Gospel, would confirm the Quran, at minimum during the 7th century when it was revealed. The Quran also states, Jesus, son of Mary, said, Children of Israel, I am indeed the messenger of God to you, confirming the Torah that is before me, and giving good tidings of a messenger who shall come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed. Who is Ahmed, you might ask? The truth is, no one knows. Muslims will of course say that Ahmed is another name for Muhammad, but they only think that because of this verse. Some scholars think Ahmed was a late addition to the Quran. For example, there is no evidence that any male child was named Ahmed in the first 125 years of Islam, while many males were named Muhammad in the same time period. Let's be generous and leave all that aside. The challenge is then this. Find any gospel manuscript from the 7th century or earlier that contains this alleged prophecy of Jesus. I'll make it real simple. All you have to do is find the name Ahmed in the words of Jesus, not even the whole phrase. And I'll even accept the name Muhammad instead of Ahmed. I'll accept it in any version, the Greek, 
the Latin Vulgate, the Old Latin, Coptic, any of the numerous dialects of Ethiopian, Syriac, Armenian, or even Gothic. The first Muslim to provide manuscript evidence of this prophecy wins $500. Legal details are in the pinned comment. This should be easy. There are hundreds of surviving manuscripts from the first seven centuries AD, and I'm only asking for one manuscript. Surely your God preserved evidence to authenticate his last and most important prophet somewhere. Consult your scholars. Consult your language experts. Heck, you can even consult Zachary Knight. And that is, if you can find where he's hiding from the law. When you can't find any manuscript evidence, you'll only have a few options. I know that you Muslims are going to try to say the gospel's been corrupted. But when did this corruption take place? If it was after the time of Muhammad, then the hundreds of manuscripts that predate Muhammad should contain some evidence of the name Ahmed. It is impossible that anyone changed all those old manuscripts in all those different languages. And if someone did try to change a manuscript, it would be obvious. Just take a look at these later scrabble changes in early copies of the Quran. I wonder what they were hiding. If the corruption took place before Muhammad, then Allah is either ignorant about the manuscripts or is lying. It also means Allah is too weak to protect his best authenticating prophecy. Not good. Your next option is that the Quran originally didn't contain this false prophecy, but was later corrupted. As noted, you even have some scholars on your side for this one. But of course, it would mean that Allah lied when he promised to protect the Quran from corruption. Also, not good. You can stick your fingers in your ears, call me a liar, say some ignorant nonsense about Christianity, and act like this isn't a problem. Clearly, this is the worst option, but sadly, it's the one many of you are going to take. Or, you could take a deep breath and admit what is obvious to everyone else already, that Muhammad is a false prophet who made up Quran verses to suit his own purposes. The choice is yours. I pray that you will make the right one. Reject your false prophet and false god and come home to the true love that only Jesus Christ can provide. Thank you for watching.